Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to install your Shimano Altegra R8050 DI2 front derailleur. So I'll go ahead, I'll run through the steps. Right, so before I go ahead and fit the derailleur, I'll just show you the uh, bolts and what they do. Mounting bolts and the adjustment bolts. There's your mounting bolt there, this is Brazon derailleur, so it's a 5mm hex head there to mount it onto your derailleur hanger. And then you've got a 2mm hex head, I'll show you exactly where it is, just down in there, like so, which then goes through and comes out just there. What then pushes on your frame, or your frame tab, to adjust the cage of the derailleur around. So I'll get to that in a bit. And then you've got the high screw there, 2mm again, just there, which adjusts the actual derailleur cage in and out. So as I say, I'll get to that, but I'll just I'll show you exactly where they are. So one of them's down in there, and the other one, the high screw's there, both 2mm. Right, so what we do is we mount the derailleur on the hanger. Now, if yours requires a tab on the frame, then what you want to do is stick it on so as when the screw comes through from the derailleur, it touches on the bit of the tab there without the tape on it. So this side, not the side with the tape on it. So it comes through and hits here with the screw, with the head of the screw. So if it was to go in there, obviously this one doesn't need one because it's going to hit directly where the derailleur hanger mount is. Here, it's just going to hit in the middle of here. As you can see where the mark is there, it's going to hit there, roughly. So. If you need one of these on there, then what you want to do is get your derailleur first of all and then put it in position where it's going to go, like so. If you've got the sticker on here, then it'll tell you what gap you need there. If you haven't got the sticker on there, then what you want to do is get yourself like a 2mm hex head like so and just put it at the front there get one of the teeth lined up and just put it between there and then rest it like so and what you can do is to get so you know where, because obviously you can't see it if you remove your back wheel it's easier so as you know where to stick that tab you just want to hold it in position like so now what you want to have behind here to mark it, say if you've got a frame that's dark coloured you're not going to be able to see where the mark was just put a piece of masking tape over there and then hold it in position like so you can put the bolt in and, and pinch it up just loose for the time being and then go ahead and screw the screw that I showed up in the body there screw it in so it puts a mark on the tape and then just remove your derailleur out of the way and you'll see the mark and then remember where that mark is and then you can remove your tape so you know and then you can stick your frame tab on so you know where the screw's going to hit. That's one way of doing it. So obviously I don't need, like I said, this doesn't need the tab on the frame because it's going to hit here where the hanger is. So what you want to do is get the Israelia 5mm hex head then I'll go ahead We'll get this screwed in place. So I'll just mount that on there, roughly where it needs to be. And then what I'll do, I'll just get a 2mm hex head in there, like so. Once you're happy with that gap at the front there, then you can snug down your. 
five millimeter. If you want to torque it up, then seven new meters torque it up. So we torque that down like so. We're happy with the gap there. And then I'll show you the next step. Right, so once you've got your dryer mounted on and you're happy with the gap there between the teeth at the front there, doesn't matter at the back, it's just at the front, the top edge here. Now, then what you do is with your high screw, which is that bottom one there, two millimeter, is if you turn that, then it moves the cage. If you turn it clockwise, it brings the cage out towards the outer chain ring. If you turn it anti-clockwise, it moves it back towards the frame. So what you want to do is just tweak it out anti-clockwise, uh, sorry. Just bring it out so as it's level with the teeth at the front. So the cage here is level with the teeth, like so, so it's parallel. And then what you want it is like, so the rear of the cage here is just inboard of the chain ring. So it's not parallel, it's just inside the chain ring, about a millimeter inside. So it's parallel at the front and then it's about a millimeter inboard at the back. And then once you've got it like that, you might have to tweak yours round. If you do, but have to bend it a bit, just do it gently. Don't go forcing it because you might break off your dryer hanger or if it's carbon or anything, you might crack it. So just make sure that you don't go forcing it really hard or anything. Just do it gently a bit at a time if you have to make any adjustment. Now, once it's just slightly in, inboard there of the chain ring, about a millimetre is fine. Then you want to locate the two millimetre hex head there that's going to go through and push on your frame, your frame tab. And then if you wind that in clockwise, if I can get on it, So once you've located the screw up in the body there, not the one down the bottom, that's the high screw, it's the one up inside. Once you've found that, now what you want to do is wind it in till it takes up the slack, and then when it hits the frame, you feel it go a bit tighter, you just want to adjust it so as it brings the cage at the back round parallel with the chain ring. So if you just adjust it like so, it brings it, it doesn't take a lot, just so it takes up some tension then it brings it parallel with the front and then the back, like so. It's not a lot, it's just literally until it, it touches and then just take up the slack in it and, it, and you'll watch the back end of the cage there come round this way. And it goes parallel all the way then. So once you've done that, we move on to the next step. Right, so then what we'll do, we'll just go and connect the, the wire up to the drylia. making sure this all the way in, like so. So once we've hooked that up, what I'll do, I'll just check that the drailer actually is functioning. So once you're happy it moves, then I'll go ahead, I'll get a chain and I'll rest the chain on the inner chain ring to start with and on the largest sprocket at the back, whatever you've got, the 32, 34, 28, whatever you've got on the back. So I'll rest it on the largest one at the back and the smallest one at the front. Just see if we need to make any more adjustments. Right, so what I've done is I've just rested the chain on the front chain ring and on the largest at the rear, like I said. And now all I'll do is just hold the front chain ring and then hold the cassette at the back. So I'll just put some tension 
on the chain so I can see where it's going to be. And I can see that it's touching on the largest at the rear, it's just touching the inside of the cage here. So it's just touching there. So being as it's literally just touching it, then all I'll do is I'll just back it off a little bit so it gives it a little a little bit more room. That's on the high screw. So I'll just back that off a little bit. And then what you want to do is back it off so it's just so it's literally just like a piece of paper's width gap between the chain and the cage just on the inside here what I'm talking about just here so when you're holding the chain the tension on it like so then there'll be just enough gap for a piece of paper to pass through there on the inside of the cage so once you've done that then just take your chain out of the way, shift the derailleur up to the largest at the front, your largest chain ring and then you can pop the chain back on and then rest it on the largest and the smallest at the back, so the 11 tooth for the back and the largest on the front and we'll do the same thing, we'll check that. Right so we're on the largest at the front now and the 11 at the back with the derailleur over on the 11 as well. So all I'll do now is just hold the chain ring again, just hold the cassette and put some tension on the chain. And then you just look in, make sure there's a very small gap there when it's in this position. So the largest and the smallest at the back. It'll only just be a hair, uh, paper's width gap there. That's all it'll be because there's not very often you're riding along in the 11 in this combination, the largest at the front and 11 at the back. So you have to have a compromise. So obviously you don't want the chain touching it, but it's going to be almost touching. There's no way around it. Because if it's almost, if you've got it too big a gap here, as in it's over this way too much to allow the chain more room, then it'll have the reverse effect when the cage is down on the smallest chain ring. There'll be no gap there for the chain when you're on the largest at the back. The chain will be just rubbing all the time so when you're going up a hill and you need the largest like your 32 or whatever on the back the chain will be constantly going against it all the time so to check this just make sure if you've got the inside one right then there should be a little gap here as well but if there's not you can adjust it that's why you've got to get it like literally a paper's width gap when you're doing the the smallest chain ring like I just showed so as it's right when you switch change up to the outside. So if you need to make any adjustment, just hold the chain tight and then literally look down this way and see it's at the front edge here you've got to worry about. Just this front piece where it dips in there. If you're looking up there, so you literally look from below and look up and have a look in there. So if you do that, hold the chain tight while you're doing it. And if it looks like it's touching you've got to have a real good look from really low down if it looks like it's touching then you've got to get it on your high screw again like so and then turn it ever such a small amount clockwise to bring the cage out just a little bit it's not going to be a lot like I say the gap there is literally a piece of paper's width gap So if it's not enough then, like I say, just turn it, just tweak it clockwise a little bit. And once you've got a tiny gap there, then you can go ahead, hook your chain up, and then try shifting with your shifter whilst turning the cranks and check the gears up and down the front and up and down the rear cassette and just check make 100% sure As you see it should knock it down straight away like that and you see there
Another thing I'll just point out is when you've got the chain on and you've got the derailleur over onto the largest chain ring at the front, just make sure that your rear of your cage in there isn't rubbing on the teeth of the chain ring because you can adjust it too far over towards the outside of the bike and then the inside you wonder what the noise is and the inside of the cage here is rubbing just touching the teeth as it's going round of the sprocket on the front of the chain ring just coming round here and touching the inside if you've got it adjusted over too far so if it's like that then it's adjusted wrong Right guys, so there's the installation complete for you, so I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.